Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. On this, the first episode of the final series of Mock the Week. Yes. Oh. You're the worst panto crowd I have ever. <laughs> <laughs> OK, joining me as we enter this final stage are Ria Lena, Josh Pugh and Reese James, Angela Barnes, Hugh Dennis and Alistair Beckett-King. <laughs> <laughs> we start now with a round call of This Is The Answer. What is the question? On the board are six categories. Josh, which <coughs> category would you like? Uh, home news. OK, your topic is home news. If the answer is 73, what is the question? Is it... What's the combined age of Leonardo DiCaprio's last four girlfriends? <laughs> <laughs> Is it uh, now Mock the Week is ending until what age will I have to keep up my paper round? <laughs> Is it now that we're in our 40s, what position did my husband and I end up in when we tried to do a 69? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many people signed the petition to save Mock the Week? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, due to rising energy costs for the elderly, what will soon be the average age of a creator on OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> is it, um, how many pens has King Charles got through this week? <laughs> is it, at what number did my charity single, Bitches Be Pimping, enter the UK chart? <laughs> Is it, I am a time-travelling folk singer from the year 19-what? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, in what year was Jesus 73? <laughs> <laughs> How many days wait for an ambulance? <laughs> <laughs> That's it's satire. <laughs> Just, you can't just do a dry <laughs> comment on the news and then say <laughs> satire. <laughs> That's not a technique. We can't do that. This the number of pictures that, of Brian Cox that Dara has in his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> why do people insist on making my relationship with Brian Cox homoerotic? <laughs> I have no idea why people always do that. Anyway, it's because you react like that and go a bit yeah. pinky. <laughs> Uh, does any of you have yeah. the correct answer? Is it how many Russian businessmen fall off a balcony in an average <laughs> week? <laughs> <laughs> how many marmalade sandwiches did I eat off the pavement last week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have the correct answer? Yeah, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be something as simple as how old is King Charles? That's absolutely right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The question I was looking for was, what age was the new monarch when he ascended the throne? This is the news of following sad events of the last couple of weeks. Prince Charles became king and is the oldest monarch in British history as they begin their reign. Uh, his name is now, as we know formally, King Prince Charles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he should be referred to that at all times. So. I was kind of annoyed when they cast Charles because... <laughs> 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 It was Idris Elba's year, you know? <laughs> I, think, I think we're ready for a hot black king. Come on. <laughs> can't be the only the one. The character was written as white. Why are they changing the colour of the character? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, the mermaid. <laughs> it is I did, you know, he flew to Balmoral and then he toured 1,900 miles, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Starting in Scotland, which makes me think he might be a proclaimer. <laughs> It was crazy as well how how much he you know he went Scot he went Scotland England Scotland Northern Ireland London Gloucestershire Wales London I mean it must have taken him forever because now he's king he can only move one square at a time. He's been on telly all week traveling around all because of his mum. Who does he think he is, Romish? <laughs> But it is, you know, as, as I pointed out in Mock the Week 2005, I believe, <laughs> he's calling himself Charles III because on post boxes, he wants it to go... They always print the name of the, of the monarch. He wants it to go C3PO. <laughs> <laughs> I 
the, uh, what is his first duty? Is it the royal warrant? No, the first duty that he oh. has is to shore up the union by reclaiming the centre parks. That, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Declared independence on Monday. They said that closing them was a mark of respect, didn't they? Is what they said at Centre Park. Yeah. And I think more of a mark of respect, probably, to both English and to the Queen, to spell both centre and park. How many people queued to pay their respects to the late Queen while she was lying in state? 250,000 people. They did. Really? Yeah. Wow. Although I do have a strange feeling that some of them, when they got to the end of the queue, having queued for 12 hours, went, so where's this new iPhone then? People <laughs> <laughs> got obsessed with the queue, didn't they? Like, it was on the news all the time, all that bird's-eye footage of the queue. Every time I looked at the telly, I thought EastEnders had started early. <laughs> <laughs> I queued. I, I, it was, you know, it was a very emotional moment to go there, pay my respects. I thought it was a bit disrespectful that they tried to sell me that picture of me bowing on a mouse mat as I left. <laughs> <laughs> I bought six key rings, that's not the point. <laughs> Did a bunch of us discuss maybe going and looking at the queue? Because you, you, they were just there on the, on the riverside, you could go and look at the queue, and then I thought, no, I'm going to wait for season seven of The Crown and just catch up then. Well, I, actually did. I, I went to look at, after I finished my queue in, I went to look at the queue. <laughs> And then someone stood behind me to look at the queue. Before, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a separate breakaway queue, then. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit ironic how angry people were about Holly and Phil jumping the queue. All these royalists angry that a couple of people have been given privileges for no apparent reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to blame women, but I don't think Gordon the Gopher would have let this happen. <laughs> <laughs> you think Gordon the Gopher would have silently... I don't remember if it was going to be squeak or was he silent? And uh, would, no, would, would, would have just... Would have placed his little paw on <laughs> Philip's hand and gone... <laughs> <laughs> this whole week's been so momentous. I, I, I was on a train, actually, when I heard the news about um, Her Majesty, and the only thing I can kind of... I had a similar thing before when Michael Jackson died. I'll never forget where I was when I heard the news that Michael Jackson died. It was, um, it was Glastonbury Festival, um, 2018, which is the full nine years after his death. I don't... That <laughs> 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 was more chewed in this time. <laughs> How were the world leaders asked to travel to the funeral? They came on a bus. They did. Didn't they? They did come on the they bus, They came yeah. on the bus from the Royal Hospital. Yeah, they went to Chelsea, they as far as Chelsea, and they had to get out of the cars and get into a bus. Biden didn't get the bus, did he? No. At first they said, um, I read that Biden had, was allowed to drive there with the beast, and at first I thought, Christ, how much does he like the chase? He <laughs> 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 realised that's the name of his vehicle. Oh, yeah. right, OK, rather, he... rather than his plus one. <laughs> uh... I think that's because, as you say, they were... They had to catch the bus, as it were, at the Royal Hospital, which is like a, a residential home for army veterans. And, of course, you couldn't let Biden get out there, could you? He'd never be allowed out. <laughs> <laughs> You're the leader of the free world. Of course you are, dear. Come on, let's get you <laughs> well, It's a shame, cos Biden's one of the only ones who can ride the bus for free. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're lucky, cos the last thing you want on a bus is an elderly American tourist getting on. <laughs> <laughs> 40-minute conversation with the driver. We're going to Leicester Square. Get it? Peter, you can't see walking in going, is that Tower Bridge? No, no, no. That's Battersea. Could you sit back down again? <laughs> Somebody described it as having school trip energy, didn't they? And I just want to know which world leader had to sit behind the driver with a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I bet all the cool countries like Australia sat at the back throwing shit at all the... Yeah. <laughs> all those nerd countries like Denmark. <laughs> Surely that's got to be the most nervous bus driver in the world. You've got 30 world leaders on there. <laughs> Literally, he was probably bringing somebody to a hockey match the day before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The following day, yeah. it's like, oh, 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 it's in Okay, yeah, it's the, yeah. The um, how did I mean? Of all the Macron, I thought was behaved superbly uh, at that. The, oh, yeah. uh, the people were genuinely stunned by this, the warmth coming from France. But it was total French funeral baller move to turn up and go. You weren't expecting this, but I loved her and she loved me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were people asked not to do in London's Green Park? Marmalade sandwiches. 
if they're not in plastic bags. In a plastic bag, mm. no matter. Yeah. yeah, so take it out of the plastic bag and then please leave it for, you know, the wildlife. Because there's nothing we want is then to attract an army of rats <laughs> uh, <laughs> to the park near his fucking palace. So if we could possibly do that, if we could leave out food like the Pied Piper of Hamlet <laughs> and draw all of the rats of London into one park. <laughs> this Paddington Bear thing with the Queen, like, that's a relatively new thing, isn't it? Because it's just from the... From the Jubilee. Class yeah. and Jubilee and the sketch. Like, yeah. it's not like they've had this long sort of history together, the Queen and Paddington Bear. It's a bit like remembering Robert De Niro just for the Warburton's advert. <laughs> <laughs> Every public figure from now on will have one. David Attenborough gets Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Well, naturally, of yeah. course he would get yeah. that there. Piers Morgan yeah, will be dragged to hell by Sooty. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I get that. I get leaving the Paddingtons, right, because obviously she did the sketch with them, but marmalade sandwiches is what he likes. Yeah. It's not necessarily what she likes. I mean, I'd be pretty pissed off if I died and they just left all stuff that someone I do comedy with likes. <laughs> <laughs> if my grave is covered in, I don't know, telescopes and potatoes, I'll be fucking... <laughs> 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 Okay, I get that round. Boys, go to you, Josh and Reeves. <laughs> now we play a round called. There's only a few more of these to do, and I couldn't give a shit anymore. This <laughs> game involves Alistair and Josh. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever we choose to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, here we go. Our first topic, please. OK, the subject is politics. What's coming up? Josh. Hello. Uh, you may have noticed already from my performance on the show that I'm not a political comedian, uh, not a political person at all. My, uh, my friend said to me recently, Josh, what would you do if you were Prime Minister for the day? I was like, uh, Prime Minister for the day? Probably not a lot. <laughs> not much I can do in a day is I'd probably get there, um, get my login sorted for the computer. <laughs> Have lunch. Uh, last day, maybe get an early finish, if I can. <laughs> I, uh, I do love the first day in a new job, though. It's one of my favourite days. My advice, if you're starting a new job, day one, have a question ready to go, cos we're always going to say you've got any questions. My question, always, day one, what's the whistleblowing policy? <laughs> Just get on the back foot, you're not, you're not messing about. I'm not, I'm not going to have a go at any politicians, but all I'll say is that some things recently have been mishandled by certain individuals. So what I'm going to say, certain individuals... I love it when people use that phrase, certain individuals. It's never anything good, is it, when that's used? Never anything positive, certain individuals. It's never, oh, thanks to certain individuals, we've raised £10,000 for cancer research. <laughs> it's never that, is it? It's always, oh, due to the actions of certain individuals, this laser quest will no longer be serving alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've looked into some stuff, and I've got to tell you, uh, Putin... Not my cup of tea. I don't, I don't like that guy's vibe at all. I'm going to use the word toxic, OK? <laughs> We've got to stop him. I saw a graphic recently, it showed a map of the UK, and it showed that if Putin dropped a bomb on London, that the blast would reach up as far as the Midlands, where I live. And I saw that, and I was like, We've got to do something. Because <laughs> I am not taking in Cockney refugees. <laughs> So I've got a spare room. If your Ukrainian family need it, you're welcome to it. I'm not having some prick from Shoreditch moving in with me. <laughs> Tell me I'm making coffee wrong. I'm not having it. <laughs> Grown men skateboarding across the border. It stops now. I, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't come to that. I could, I could never be in the army. I'd be rubbish in the army. Uh, couldn't even be in the army reserves. Whatever they do. Um, <laughs> army reserves, I think they fight against the smaller nations midweek. <laughs> I, think, uh, <laughs> I think that's what they do. Well done, Josh Q. That leaves with Alistair. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is growing up. <laughs> sea levels have been rising <laughs> for my entire life. But for the first 16 years, I was getting taller, so I didn't notice. <laughs> it seemed a similar distance away. My first job was uh, working by the sea. I worked on a pier on a ride called The Ride of Your Life. And we called it that because every year, someone died. <laughs> and that, that was just the price of fun in those days. <laughs> every year, someone will be wounded or flung into the surf. It's like, what do you want us to do? Close the ride? <laughs> it's a large piece of machinery that spins human beings around and around and around, operated and maintained by bored teenagers. <laughs> every so often, someone's gonna whiz off. 
To be fair, it was mostly older people on the pier, and old ladies really like me. Like, <laughs> a lot. Like, you know those early Beatles films where they're being chased through the streets by teenage girls? <laughs> well, it's those girls' mums now. <laughs> my demographic and it's the hair that attracts them I think they approach me they always say the same thing they go oh wasted on a boy <laughs> and they follow up with the question do you mind if I ask is it natural and I say no I was cursed by a traveling peddler <laughs> to wander the earth never knowing rest for 500 years <laughs> and they hate that <laughs> very much answer. very good <laughs> And the voice go to Joshu. Well done. Come on back. <laughs> now we play a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, teens, what's going on here? It's a machine for spraying manure everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> now at least we know what Theresa May was running from in that field of wheat. <laughs> when you order an Uber in Shropshire. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot better than the last Prime Minister who offered to spread their seed. Oh. <laughs> is she saying in this country we import two-thirds of our ill-fitting jackets? <laughs> that <laughs> is a disgrace. <laughs> It's a weird vehicle to take to a funeral, but you've got to admire her confidence. <laughs> her expression really says, my daddy says I can drive it when I'm older. <laughs> Is this what happens when you Google search middle-aged woman ploughed with the... A... <laughs> <laughs> Is this just a picture of the world's lamest sundial? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> She's saying, no, I said I'd face my detractors. <laughs> <laughs> Is it super vet euthanasia special? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is this Boris on RuPaul's Drag Race? <laughs> <laughs> Is any of the correct answer? Yes. It's Liz Truss in front of a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, you. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yes, of course, this is Liz Truss, who became the UK's new Prime Minister after defeating Rishi Sunak in the Conservative Party leadership contest. What are the biggest issues facing the new government, then? Well, they've got Liz Truss at the head of them, so that's <laughs> the main one. Do you, know, you feel like if Liz Truss can be Prime Minister, anyone could do it. You could win the UFC, I could win Rear of the Year, anything is possible. <laughs> People have a go at her because she's, like, wooden, especially when she did the speech at the funeral home. So, oh, she's really wooden. You go, yeah, there's 50 million people watching. If 50 million people watch this, I'd be pretty wooden. I'd be going to 73, Age of the King, Age of the King. Sorry, so, uh, I'm sorry, Chef, Mum, Dara, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> We've got people crying out for help with their heating bills, and they're like, yep, that's right, we're going to do it. We're getting rid of the sugar tax. And we're like, yes, <laughs> the hated sugar tax is gone. <laughs> Finally, orphans running up to me at the streets. Is it today? Nearly orphans, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> the sugar tax will be no more. Truss will do it. I think it's wonderful. No, I, think that's, I think that's 4D chess from Truss, OK? Get rid right. of the sugar tax. We all put on a layer of fat. We don't even need heating. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone is worried about money, though, I've got loads of money saving tips. OK, for this crisis, this financial yeah. crisis about to be in the recession and stuff. First of all, uh, swap the expensive free-range eggs in the supermarket into the cheap egg box. The barcode's on the box. <laughs> Literally no victims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, instead of paying for Wi-Fi in your house, just work on a tube platform all day. <laughs> right? Buy yourself a raffle book, right, then go into the cloakroom at a nightclub, free coat. <laughs> Share bath water with pasta. <laughs> How do you know when you're done in the bath? You throw or yourself you like... against the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, in lighter news, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> We've got a new king. <laughs> Do you think he is looking to sign the online petition to save Mock the Week? <laughs> 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 
Nope. Because no. now he's seen this going, how do I delete signature on petition? Uh... Yeah. He wasn't invited to the funeral, was he? He wasn't. This no, is him checking, because... checking his email yet again. Uh... <laughs> Vladimir, have a look in junk folder. It may have gone back. <laughs> I think he actually was invited, but they would have had him sitting on the war criminals table and he didn't want to talk to Tony Blair. <laughs> <laughs> you, you. Satire. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit that these threats this week, hasn't it? He's really sort of, I'm not bluffing, I'm gonna, you know, literally talking about nuclear weapons and the West. And he's not gonna nuke London, is he? Because Loads of Russian money is still in London. That'd be like a loan shark nuking a council estate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, see, see, we can make these jokes because we're off air in four weeks, so we don't have to continue <laughs> doing this show in a post-nuclear holocaust landscape. <laughs> yeah. It is exciting. I mean, I'm not, like, an expert poker player, but I don't believe when you're bluffing you say, I'm not bluffing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can see him getting caught up in the security questions, like, what does mother's maiden name? Do you know what happened to the last journalist who asked that question? <laughs> <laughs> Which I is think... funny because actually they did die mm. in real life. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Chris, Satire. Good Satire. <laughs> If you, um, if you zoom in, actually, on that pop-up, it just says, you have performed an illegal operation. <laughs> it's very difficult, though, isn't it, to be... I mean, it is a very scary situation, but it's very... You know, it's difficult to be scared of a man who poses for a photo like that, which looks like it should say underneath, in Russia, our small business advisor will be with you <laughs> every step of the way. It looks like a, just like a search engine homepage, which is always the biggest tell that someone has just rapidly clicked off some porn. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at general internet. <laughs> just internet. I reckon he's just been on Twitter and he's just going, wow, some very unsavoury things. That's why you don't search your own name. Whatever happened to hashtag be kind? <laughs> <laughs> If you look closer, you can see Clippy the paperclip there going, I see you're trying to cut off gas supplies to the distant <laughs> west. At the end of that round, we're going to Angela Hugh and Alistair. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read at this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panels can come up with. Right, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely lines from a blockbuster movie. I feel the need, the need for speed. <laughs> well, Mr. Gove, you're not in the cabinet anymore. Go for it. <laughs> Listen, trust me, Freaky Friday seems like a laugh, and then you swap bodies with your mum and your dad comes home drunk. <laughs> Before we apes kill the final human and take over the planet, I'm just going to sit in that tyre and masturbate for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. I am the father of a murdered son, the husband of a murdered wife. And I've got a podcast! <laughs> so... <laughs> Tune in wherever you got your podcast. <laughs> the aliens have destroyed Los Angeles and Paris. We think London could be next. They seem to be targeting wankers. <laughs> Showdown at dawn. I'll be there. When is dawn exactly? It's different every day. Should we put, might be just put a time on it. <laughs> <laughs> wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Okay, you were over now. I do your crack. <laughs> I will kill Bill. As a rule, I'll always do the thing that rhymes with your name. Does anyone know a Chuck? <laughs> My name? I have almost forgotten it. Born under a black star, cursed and reviled, yes. My name is Neil Johnston. And the long number on the card is <laughs> 592... <laughs> Batman returns, no problem. Fill in the label, pop him in a bag, take him to a post office. <laughs> You know, most evil overlords only become evil because they experience some childhood trauma. Is there any chance that could have happened to you, Professor Poopy Willy? <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
My mom always said life is like a box of chocolates. It doesn't last as long if you're medically obese. <laughs> I've gathered you here today because you're the world's best superheroes and I just bought a shit ton of flat pack furniture. Now, Avengers, assemble. <laughs> <laughs> the Tin Man had no heart, the Lion had no courage, and the Scarecrow had no brain. And that's how they all ended up in Liz Truss's cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> It seems the killer has left his or her fingerprints all over the crime scene. And he or she has also left a considerable amount of semen. <laughs> <laughs> Batman, why do we keep the Batmobile in the Batcave? It's covered in bat shit. <laughs> I had sex last night with the North God. Thor? I can't even piff. <laughs> I suppose I always expected my life to be a fairy tale. I guess I'm still waiting for my Prince Andrew. <laughs> Thou shalt not pass of Mr. Schofield, yeah. Here you go. <laughs> OK, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear on a property show. <clears throat> So, as you can see, she's a bit of a fixer-upper. She needs a lot of work done, but she wants to buy a house with me, so we're looking for a new build. <laughs> well, it's all about location, location, location. And this is a shithole, shithole, shithole. <laughs> we're here in Calais with Ahmed and Khadija for a special episode of Escape Into the Country. <laughs> So, basically, what we've done here is we've put Nick Knowles in a cupboard and bricked it up. <laughs> you could do anything here. You could knock through that wall, you could retile the roof, uh, but not the patio. You mustn't touch the patio. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra and John are planning to sell their three-bedroom terrace in Wigan uh, so they can go to London to get a spot of lunch. <laughs> John and Jules have knocked through from their bedroom into the room next door. They didn't mean to, but that's Viagra for you. <laughs> whoa, 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 when I said you should knock one out, I meant one of the walls. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we've built the panic room, ideal for opening your next gas bill. <laughs> <laughs> They've made an offer of 320, which is quite low, because most houses cost thousands of pounds. <laughs> So, a year on, I've come back to see how they're getting on. Fuck me, still not finished. <laughs> oh, you're right, it is big enough. <laughs> the previous owner did leave it in a state of disrepair, but honestly, I'm thinking about making an offer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm babbling. Time of death, 4.15... <laughs> Welcome to the new show where we help millennials to buy their first ever property. Yes, this is Hitman for your gran. <laughs> Old fashioned and some jaw dropping views. We won't be inviting Kirsty Allsop on Question Time again. <laughs> Hi, I'm a public school twat walking towards the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've, uh, I've put your cheeky offer into the owners and they told me to shove it up my arse. <laughs> um, I don't know how to tell you this. I know you just completed, but the sweet old widowed man that you bought the house off has... Well, he's tied a bunch of balloons to it and floated off into the sky. <laughs> Rupert and Jacinda are 25 years old and have a budget of 2.5 million pounds. Wankers. <laughs> Tim and Dorothy plan to move because of the primary school situation. Tim isn't allowed within 500 metres of one. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the point is going to Rhea, Josh and Reese. 
That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Ria Lina, Josh Pugh and Reese James. <laughs> Commiserations to Angela Barnes, Hugh Dennis and Alistair beckett -Kill. Thank you for watching. I'm Darrell Green. Good night. What planet is she on? Philomena unlocks the mystery of human civilization, and she's got many questions to ask. Watch Conk on Earth on BBC iPlayer.